I'm honestly not sure this season could really be going any better for us right now. We're massively ahead of where I expected to be in the league. We've pulled off some absolute miracles, really, in the Europa League, or Europa Conference League, rather, to get ourselves in a position where qualification is all but confirmed. Today, though, we still have to find out if we're capable of winning the group. We've also got the Tactic, which is now available to download. More on that in a second. If you have enjoyed the series, though, drop a like on the video. That would be bloody spiffing, and I really do appreciate it. I know a lot more people have been finding the channel lately, which is kind of awesome, and I think that's thanks to you guys. So thank you so much for that, and welcome anyone new. So apologies that today's video might be slightly shorter. There's less games to be covered. I have a house viewing later on, and unfortunately, the timing's made it extremely awkward because it's in the middle of the day. But you know how housing can be in the UK at the moment, so you just kind of take what you can when you can. Hopefully, though, we can still get some massive progress done in Europe today, and that's the real key factor for us right now. Because we start off today at home against Ranas. Now, they're actually a lot better than they were last season. They're sixth in the league, looking like a really good run, potentially even, at qualification for the championship stage, which should be a massive step in the right direction for them. And to be fair, some of the sides that were down towards the bottom last year have done a bit better this year, uh, less so for the likes of Viborg, who, of course, were the team that we stiffed out of a European spot in the very last minute. Uh, I do feel a bit sorry for them. And of course, AC Horsens down there, who apparently have at least won a match now. So I guess there's that. They're basically doing exactly the same thing that Vile did last year. As for the tactic, I did manage to get it up on the Steam Workshop. They finally let me actually upload a tactic to the Workshop, so there should be a link to the tactic in the description to the video. Now, uh, it should work basically plug and play, I would have thought. Now, the couple of things you'll have to change with sorting it out for your team would be, firstly, making sure that you have the strikers on the correct feet. So really try to prioritize the footedness of your advanced forward. If you have to take a hit on the DLF for that, then that's fine. That seems to be the more optimal way of doing it. It does have the set pieces built in, but obviously I'm currently aiming them at um, Carlson because he's very tall. You may have to adjust that to aim it for one of your center backs to get maximum out of that. But other than that, it should be good to go. And I'm very curious, actually. So do let me know if you start using it, how it's good, how well it's done for you, honestly, because I, I think this might be the best one I've built for several years on our fair, maybe even since I came back to Football Manager content again i really really like the way this tactic plays and it clearly just makes teams play better than they are and that's always what you're looking for out of a tactic now we have to rotate quite heavily for today because of the europeanness so this should be an interesting one okay so we're gonna go with that you can see that it still hasn't fixed everything but it's what we had to do the likes of abule and gorda and carlson and yallan and abid they all had to drop out so pritchard and berger hansen going as the front two not ideal but there you go rothwell sitting slightly further up with matos and yakanovic in the midfield ilsa and Storley at left and right back with vespi debelda and turnison there uh, Corona obviously will come back in. He's done a bit better lately after a few little mistakes, but I trust the young man and I think he's only going to get better. But uh, this lineup does worry me slightly because the one thing that is abundantly clear today is we just need to keep winning matches just to try and stay in that fight. I, I really do think we're kidding ourselves if we think we're actually in a title race this season. We could have a worldie of a year, still get well over two points a game, looking for current, you know, high 60, early 70 points and probably still be 10, 15 points off the top by the end of the season. But that's just life. It's difficult to know what to do when you're up against a team who, and I stress, I cannot stress this enough how ridiculous this is. FC Copenhagen, for those of you that missed it, have only conceded one league goal this season in 14 matches. We're nearly halfway, well, what? nearly halfway through the season and they've yet they've let in one goal that is utterly absurd and i think they could be like a record-breaking season that they're on for it reminds me a lot of the uh, norwegian league again but that's what we've got to overcome but my concern is that we're not going to be able to get it done today um this is a very weakened side in many ways for us we still don't quite have the depth that i would like but as i said before that's going to take a couple of seasons for us to really bed that in bring some players through start to really build this team up from scratch it's you know the, we're well ahead of schedule this year my plan was just championship group this season and then try and go from there see what we can accomplish in europe really we're well ahead of the curve if we could actually qualify for the europa league this year and hit the knockouts of the conference league then that's you know far and away that's still an a plus season for me you know i mean i suppose not a plus because a plus would be winning the league i guess but still bloody excellent it also was space it's got runners they're still in space and pritchard's there and it's bounced over the bar around the sofa de la hodge we've started a bit slowly here around the sofa lunga he's through and it's a great tackle there but we have looked a bit on the rope so far just lacking that little extra we miss abule and yalanen in a team like this we need one of those guys that can be uber creative and as good as rothwell is I haven't seen enough out of him in that sort of sense to really make me think that's what he's capable of. It's Jokanovic with a big header. It's what you don't normally get from our centre is that kind of industriousness. As Berger Hansen on a nice position here. Drips around the side of Matos. He just has to shoot here. And, oh, I thought that was in. Carl Pritchard, Berger Hansen might have to go for goal. He does! Over the crossbar. And don't commit a penalty. More importantly, ball in. And Delahosh, good save from Caron. I think I'm surprised he was let go by Norgeland because he seems to have found a new lease of life here. Matos around the side for Berger Hansen. This is great play. Pritchard on his left foot. And a good save. Once again, finding some space with the middle of Shavinsky. And it's a Another great save from Caron. That is one of the best saves of the match so far. He's done really well in this first half. Yes, a half time, incredibly even, honestly. They've given us a really good run for it here. Uh, some great saves, actually, in the first half from Sylvain Caron. So good work from him. As much as it's congested, if we move the ball fast enough, we could definitely get something through there. Storley. 
Whipping it through, Yakanovic! Yes! Nikita Yakanovic playing as a centre midfielder. He's been actually probably the best player on the pitch for us today, other than Caron. And he gets his desserts there. Great goal from him. 51 minutes and a 1-0 lead. Come on! Okay, we've gone with a triple sub here. We've got on Lindstrom, we've got on Ibule, and we've got on Nielsen. Just to try and freshen this team up a little bit. Just to keep us involved in this game. Unless Berge Hansen can pop this back across. Storley! Oh! <laughs> Should have been two there, really. We don't need to overdo it now. Just to be patient. Rothwell, Berge Hansen showing some speed still. Nice. He's into the box. He's got support. Will he go for it? No, find Storley again. Oh, it's a, actually an excellent cross. Honestly, Yukanovic. Yukanovic is having a great day to Nielsen. He just does everything. He's a striker. He's a centre back. He's a wing back. He, he's just the ultimate utility man. We've got a Swiss Army knife of a full but of a player in Seb Nielsen, and he does everything to a nice level. He never seems to put in great performances, but never any bad ones either. Yukanovic, lovely pass for Storley. Go on, first time. Oh, great. Oh, 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 that is gorgeous. Oscar Lindstrom, ninth goal of the year. 2-0 Sunny. But what a cross from Storley. With FC Copenhagen still drawing 0-0 against newly promoted Odense at home, which would allow us to cut their gap back to, I think, four points, potentially. Oscar Lindstrom into the box. He might just have to shoot here. No, patience. Lovely to see it. Nielsen, what's he thinking? Rothwell? Nielsen with the assist. Terry Rothwell, 3-0 to Sunny. But <laughs> Nielsen is so damn good. I might have to start playing him more in every position. He has half a star in that role. He always just seems to have an eye for a cross and a pass, and he's defensively stable. He's just... I think I'm in love with him, friends. He's brilliant. Oh, here I go. something coming here, maybe. Oh, surely not another one. Storley. Can he find it again? And Terry... What a block off of Terry Rothwell. They're Storley as well today. Well, that looks like it's going to do it. Sunyuska 3, Rana's nil. Um, yeah. Second half, Sunyuska strikes again. Just really, really stepped it up a notch in that second period and thoroughly deserved the result. Storley, unless there's one more. Ibule... Oh, Jokanovic, no, it's off. There we go. 3-0 Sunny got Really, really strong performance. I mean, you can see the second half difference. We were level neck and neck at halftime and then absolutely blew them away in the second half there. Jokanovic, Lindstrom and Terry Rothwell. But hey, big credit to Seb Nielsen coming in there and doing a stellar job. Before he even got the assist, he was putting in brilliant crosses, great passes. He's just very, very good. And Storley as well on the left-hand side. I think he got two assists today. So big up him. Really good performance. And I think they drew. They did. A nil-nil at the very top. So it's still only one goal conceded in 15, which is... a. I cannot stress this enough, utterly ridiculous. But nevertheless, it does allow us to get the gap back to five points. We're staying within, not even touching distance. It's sort of like, if they were to slam their brakes on, we might be able to crash into their ass. But that's about as close as we're going to get right now. But really, the other four sides all underneath, all one. I mean, there's now a nine-point gap between fourth and fifth in this division. We're currently seeing, we've got double the number of points the seventh now. 17-point gap. Uh, in fact, we may have already wrapped up that spot nearly. So that's all good. But, uh... This title, I mean, that battle for second spot is not over by any means, and neither is the league title, but it could all change. Right, a few games off camera, then we're back for the final Europa League, sorry, Europa Conference League group game, which could actually mean an awful lot, because we need to win it, because it's Hartberg. And also not off camera, you know, you're gonna see, you know how it goes. In other news, Thompson finally got their act together again under their new manager. Only one defeat this season to Starbeck, and have won the league by 18 points, potentially could even be more than that. That's kind of mad. They're having a bloody good season there. Nowhere near the season we had. It cannot be stressed enough how good our season was when we won the title by 21 points and got 80, like 26 wins out of 30 was insane that season. Who did we lose to that year? Lilstrom, of course. Lilstrom threw in goal. 35 seconds in. Can he give us the lead? Yes, he can. We go ahead in the cup. It's a relatively strong side here because we can because of international break. 1-0. Oscar Lindstrom. Another good goal for him. Nice to see. Boule again. Rothwell. So it's through for Lindstrom. Can he finish this time? Yes, he can. 11th goal of the season for Oscar Lindstrom. I know it's only the cup, but the man's still got a score and he's definitely impressed me a lot more than he was originally. Fires one outside for the left side for Storley. He's got room to get across in this time. First time. And Lindstrom is on the end of it. A hat trick for Oscar Lindstrom. Storley with another assist for the year, but Lindstrom has just been killing it today. Hansen, there could be a pass into the channel here. There is. It's Gunnarud against Karun. Oh my goodness me. Uh, Karun just let that one slip through and Julian Gunnarud has gone back for Roskilde. Uh, is that YMCA team? You'd love to see it. Vespi down the left. Could we get one more for luck here? Cuts back onto his right foot. Slots it for Matos. This is nice. He'll probably have to cut back as well. Does. And it's a bead and it's 4-1. Nordina bead. Nice finish from him. 4-1 Sunilska comfortably through in the cup. Fairly straightforward. 4-1 victory away from home in the cup. This is exactly what we needed. I put Sebastian Nielsen in again, and he did yet another really, really solid job as a right wing back for us. I know. He just does a bit of everything, doesn't he? But yeah, good result for us. Needed that. We go through. Hattrick for uh, Lindstrom. He'd love to see it. We just lucked the hell out with our cup draw. We managed to knock, get the only third tier side still remaining in the trophy. That's really fortunate. So we get to play against Schroed next, which is going to be great because rotation... Jadzic around the side for Nicoletti. A lot of bodies forward here for Midland. This is a big one. Huge clash towards the top. Great ball in and Choich. Oh, what a save from Caron. That is top draw from our wonderful new keeper. Clote, nice to see him back. He's had a few injuries. International break with Ghana where they qualify for the World Cup in there too. Why was the keeper facing the other way? 
It looked like the keeper was making a late run into the box to clear that, but sure, you do you, bud. Nil-nil away at Midland. I don't think we played particularly well in this game. We just really couldn't get anything going. Pritchard had to come off the bench in this one because he was still a bit tired from Wales duty. But honestly, getting a nil-nil draw here, very, very good. Carone pulled out some brilliant stops in this game to keep us that clean sheet. And it's nice to see him seemingly back to his best there. You can see the defence was actually really solid in today's game. Just couldn't seem to get anything going farther forward. Uh, mostly it was just saving stuff off of Choi Chi Kin, who, by the way, is Danish, but he's actually Hong he's actually a Hong Konger, which is a really cool dual nationality to see in the game. So that's pretty sick. He's actually up for Danish player of the year too. But unfortunately, all that ground that we gained back on FC Copenhagen in the last match day has now evaporated again as they were three nil winners against Rana. So they have now gone half the season. Half the season has elapsed and they've still only conceded one goal. I, I wonder how long this... I'm genuinely curious now, my friends. Let me know in the comments, how many goals do you think FC Copenhagen are going to concede this season in total in the league? I still think it's going to actually be over 10, but I think it's only going to really start happening once we get to the championship group and the games get tougher for them. But... Imagine if they managed to concede single-digit goals this season. They should have already conceded 10 goals. <laughs> it's kind of mad how much their goalkeeper has saved their asses this year. He's outrageous. So, Leicester City, if we have any hope of winning this group, this game is a must-win. If we can win here, we actually probably would be a shoe in to win the group. But winning at the King Power is going to be no easy feat. I think we were actually very unlucky not to beat them in the home match. But away from home, I think it's going to be very difficult. They, they beat Villarreal 5-1 on this ground. And I mean, I know we beat Viral as well, but Ekpe's already through for Leicester City. Good save from Corona. We're going to need a lot more of that in this game, I sense, if we're going to have any chance of beating them. Mark up your friends, lads. Ekpe's ball. Knocks it down. Prescott. Oh, it's a great goal from Tim Prescott. Edge of the box. Leicester 1. Suniuska 0. Really not what we wanted there. I think Caron maybe could have got down, but I can hardly fault him. He's been excellent today. It's an interesting pass, but look at the space for a bead. He's through. He's about to be substituted. Could he score? Oh, he's at the post. It's in. It's in off the Leicester player. Swaby has scored an own goal and we're level at the King Power. Abid is about to be substituted and the wing back, the defensive midfielder stroke wing back has just gone through and scored. What a ball from Terry Clote. The left, the Leicester City centre back just turns off. Abid eventually takes this far too wide, hits the post, hits Swaby on the foot and oh my goodness me. Swaby there has just unlocked a new perk on the on the depression skill tree. Ilsa, got to be careful with losing the ball in these positions. Exactly like that Fitzpatrick. Oh, that's a shame. Michael Ekpe, I mean, really, I they deserve the win, but to concede the goal in that fashion is extremely disappointing. I kind of knew the moment he took the throw. Can we find one last cutting-edge pass here? No. Gorda. Lindstrom. Oscar Lindstrom to keep us in the fight. No, it's saved. Oh, God, that was the chance. Lindstrom should have equalized for us in the 95th minute. Leicester City 2, Suniska 1. No complaints. They were the better side on the night. Uh, we got a bit fortunate with the own goal, but that said, we should have still got the draw out of this because of the fact that we just gave them their second goal on a plate. Just completely irresponsible defending. Shocking play from us, really. Caron was still excellent in this game. Made it, what was it, 10 saves. So he did fantastically, but disappointing. But I think the other game was still 0-0. Incredible. Incredibly, TSV Hartberg drew with Villarreal, and that is basically enough. In fact, not basically enough. It is enough for us to seal qualification because we've got a better head-to-head -head than Villarreal, having got a draw and a win against them, and that three-point gap. So we have wrapped up second in the group. We can't win it anymore, which is a massive shame. But I still want to see if we can finish off on a nice, healthy 11 points, which would be way more than I expected from this group, to be fair. There we go. Sunil is going to qualify for the first knockout round. That is exactly what I want to see from us. Really, really pleased with our performances in Europe this year. Uh, you know, getting the win against Villarreal, we possibly even could have beaten them away. We were unlucky not to beat Leicester at home as well. There's something in this team. I think we can still go fairly deep if we play our cards right. Ingebrigtsen from the edge of the box. This is actually scorable territory, I'd say, and it is scorable territory. Fabian Ingebrigtsen, 1-0 to Orb. We do not need this right now. Clipping one all the way through. Oh, it's been fat. What are you doing? Presman Storley, absolute moron there. Throwing away. I mean, this is just going to be one of those terrible games, isn't it? Edlon from the spot. Caron can't save it. 2 0 to Orby in the first half. Uh, yeah, far from ideal. Pritchard knocks it down for Berger Hansen. Nice. Here's the return pass. Joe Pritchard hasn't scored for a little while. Can he go through? He's gone around the keeper and it's a brilliant save. Maybe a nice low cross. Good ball. Pritchard. Oh my goodness me. Joe Matos. Rothwell runners again. Lindstrom's one of them. He's through on goal. Oscar Lindstrom through. Round the goalkeeper on his left foot. Lindstrom in there. Now becomes our top scorer. Incredibly, he's now our top scorer. 2 1. Back in it. We're stepping it up a lot more in the second half now. Round the side again for Lindstrom. Through on goal. He's in. Oscar Lindstrom hits the post this time. Can he create it from something himself? Terry Rothwell sets himself. Back post. Terry, no, please. Oh, God. Well, there we go. Uh, Orby, two. Sunio's got one. Uh, how on earth we didn't get something from this match, I don't know. I mean, I do know. It was chance creation. Uh, chance creation was fantastic. Scoring wasn't. Uh, Pritchard, I don't know what it is. When we flipped him back over and he got onto his correct foot, he started scoring goals again because he was on his correct foot. Now... 
he's just hitting them all at the goalkeeper again. It's like it worked for a couple of games and now he's just gone back to being rubbish. It's really, really interesting. Luckily, Lindstrom came off the bench and was able to grab one back for us. But we had countless other opportunities in this match to score goals and just couldn't do it. But we know that comes down to just personnel. It happened at Tromsø as well. It just took us to find the right players that could take the chances. Um, I don't know what it's going to take for this team, but it certainly is certainly... I'm seeing a lot of the same symptoms, basically, where they just can't seem to score enough goals based on what they should be doing. But that's going to take us a little while to solve. At least we're not as far off the pace as Tromsø were at one point. But FC Copenhagen finally do concede another goal. We slipped down to third in the league now with that defeat. And we're actually only three points off of fifth place now, uh, despite that ridiculous start. Still casually operating on a nice two points a game still. Um, obviously, the title is gone. Eight points clear already. That would take some mammoth effort in the second half of the season in the championship group to pull anything back from there. But it really does look very unlikely. Vibok falling to a 4-0 defeat to Ranas, who keep themselves in that spot, actually, and move above Orbi, despite them winning uh, with that result, too. So, yeah, I, I don't know what to make of it. We could still end up finishing fifth this year, honestly. I I'm still not entirely convinced by us. We just have great games, but then also have some really iffy games where we still play really well but just don't look good enough to score the goals really is the problem so now that we've wrapped up the sort of first half of the season essentially because there's no more league games until after christmas at this point i thought we'd just have a little look at where we sit statistically and you can see that really fourth place third place is actually pretty solid for us really norgeland have kind of really caught themselves up and i think in the end they will be the side that probably does end up overtaking us as well i think esbio are the one we have to worry about i think that's where our real battle lies i feel like over the course particularly when we get to those championship group games i don't think we're going to quite have the quality to be able to cope with playing against these big sides constantly and i think our real battles are going to be against esbia and whoever that sixth side is really and according to the statistics it should actually be agf by a considerable margin but they've underperformed hugely this season but it looks like it's more likely to be OB or Randers, which is pretty damn sick, which is where we find ourselves today. Now, nothing happens even if Villarreal beat Leicester, which I just have this horrible feeling they're going to beat Leicester, and that will be the draw at Leicester would have been enough for us, potentially. But life goes on, eh? Luckily, we've had a full rest week, and we can play pretty much the strongest lineup available for us for the first time probably in a while, as you can actually see. It's nice to have these guys back in the team, honestly. Matos is the only one that's slightly uh, knackered, or was injured, I believe, actually. So that's not too much of an issue in there, too. I want to make sure Pritchard plays today. He needs some confidence. He, he just does. And I feel like a game against Hartberg is what's going to help him with that. He's got 11 goals this season, but he's struggled so much. I'm going to just yell at him, honestly, right now. And he's on board with that. And I can understand why he would be, honestly, because he's been dreadful lately. He really, really has. And I don't know what to say. I think he's just incredibly inconsistent. I don't know if he's got consistency issues. Nope, of course not. He's got green consistency and loves big matches. Of course. He just can't seem to do it often enough. Hopefully today, though, we can grab a couple of goals, hopefully beat Hartberg fairly comfortably. That's the play anyway. And then just go from there. And of course, as a result of coming second in our group, which is likely to happen, God, our form a bit lately is a bit rubbish, isn't it? It seems unlikely that we're going to get a particularly good draw, but it is the Conference League. So you could have had some weak groups that maybe have some interesting group winners. Maybe. They have a player called Pusvold. <laughs> Love it. So let's get out there do this, get the win, get some confidence back as well, and hopefully see Joe Pritchard. That's what I really want for today's game. A win and a Joe Pritchard goal, or at least a goal, would be just really nice for me, just to see him break that little uh, run of not being able to score, hopefully get the man some confidence back. We've got a cup game as well, technically, before Christmas, but we'll just bundle that in at some point, because it's against the third tier side. I want to play Pritchard for that as well, just to really give him a chance to bump his numbers up a little bit, get the confidence back into his scoring boots, and hope that we can get a better player on the second half of the season. I don't think there's any scenario which we... Oh, Pritchard's through. Right, Joe Pritchard, honestly, right foot drills it home there we go joe pritchard 13 minutes in gets in the position takes the shot lovely assist from cloudy that is what we needed early confidence for this young man i say he's like 26 but you know second goal always important in a game like this fires one out wide for cloudy again it's lovely to have terry back in this side he's just that little bit better than um storley and storley's very good a bead oh it's great work pritchard's in there again 20 minutes in joe pritchard another goal for him second one on the night ah this is a dream scenario for us two nil up in 20 minutes pritchy with both of them Big up, JP. I'd love it if he could absolutely fill his boots today. Oh, he's in again here. Pritchard knocks it down this time, unselfishly, but he's gone for it again. Here we go. Speeding that play up a bit. A bead pops it out for Ilsa. One touch stuff. Look at this football. This is gorgeous stuff. It, oh, wow. If this turns into a goal, Clouty. Ball in. Carlson's header, and it just goes wide. So we're Boulay in the box. Can he find that little cheeky little inside pass as Carlson drives it home? It's 3 0 on half time. Really good goal from him. Lovely little disguised pass from a Boulay. He's so good at those little cheeky passes. Well, that gets us to half time. I think we've probably quite fortunate to be that far ahead, but I think it just comes down to the fact that Pritchard and Carlson today have been lethal in front of goal. Exactly what we wanted. Leicester 3 1 up in their game. So at least we're going to beat them on the score lines today. Obviously, we have a much weaker opponent than they do, but that's fine. These guys drew a Villarreal. Just get that passing, the movement moving a little bit faster. Yalanen. 
runner. Now the runners are starting to happen. Oh, lovely football. Now we're starting to stretch them. Ilsa, it's through for Joe Pritchard. Great block. It's got the overlap this time from Ilsa. Can we find a good cross this time? No, goes patient again. No problem with that. Yalanen, all the way through. Clouty, he hasn't scored for us yet, but he might get the assist today. No. Oh my goodness me. Saved by the keeper. What an absolute scramble there. Clouty again, choosing to turn back. He's trying to reserve some energy. No, he's not. He's spun in behind. Can he find a cross? It's a, actually quite a poor one by his standards, honestly. Oh my God, Yalanen. Oh, Yalanen with the back heeled assist nearly there. Yalanen, nice one touch stuff again. Back through for Christopher Carlson. Has to bend one, and he's bent it wide. Popping it around the corner. Here we go. Lovely pass through. It's a bead. Can he kill the game off? Yes, he can. Lovely finish in the bottom corner from Nordin a bead. 4 0 to Sunny Well, it looks like 4 0 home and away against Hartberg is pretty solid for us. We'll take it. We just needed to make sure we did the job. And today we've done exactly that. Clean sheet to go with it. 4 0. We were never going to win the group from the position we were in, but Clote again was phenomenal. An 8.9 today. Pritchard scoring a pair of goals. Seemed to tail off a little bit after the good first 20 minutes but just seeing him score some goals is great for his confidence and in the end we do lose the group by five points but we also come six points above Villarreal which is extremely impressive from us I would have been I would have bitten your hand off for a plus eight goal difference and 11 points from this group and qualifying so easily to be fair now the question is who we're going to get so let's get to that draw now and uh, see how this one goes but I just thought actually because I know you like guys like me to highlight players I thought we'd just have a look, look at Joe Pritchard and this season 13 goals in total still very very solid and he did grab two very important goals there and he's got nine goals in the Europa Conference League this season that's where most of his goals have come from in Europe nine goals this season in Europe. Uh, just the four in 14 in the league. So you can see that he's massively overperformed his XG in Europe. 5.77 XG for nine goals, but in the league, 5.41 XG for four goals. That's, I mean, better quality keepers perhaps, but still, you'd think that he he has to pick that up a little bit. Overall, he's still actually on the money, but it's just a bit weird when you see him perform so poorly in the league. Conference league draw. So we can have any of these teams. And honestly, I only see a few in here that I'm genuinely scared of. Obviously, you can see the ones on the right. So, Basel, Breitha, Blick, Galatasaray, EK Sirius, Lille, Maccabi, Tel Aviv, Slavia, Prague, and Viborg. Well, obviously, we can't get them. But the ones you'll probably hit on my face cam, uh, AEK, Benfica, FCSB, HJK. Oh, imagine. Legia, Lugano, Osiek. The only ones that really, really scare me out of those. Benfica obviously scare me. Lille would be quite a tough aisle, I suspect. But everybody else, I kind of feel like we could take. Basel might be quite tough as well. But, oh, imagine if we've got HJK. Lille. Typical, isn't it? <laughs> Typical. We get one. There's so many teams in there we could have got, but we still managed to get one of the toughest ones. I suspect that there is an element of certain... I don't know if everyone could have been drawn against everybody else. I do wonder if one side were only going to be drawn against the others, perhaps. But nevertheless, Lille, that's still quite a tough one, uh, unfortunately. I think all the ones on this side are third place from the Europa League teams. But Lille's not going to be easy, but I don't think it's beyond... I don't think it's beyond us. So, I, I realise this has been a short episode. I did explain why, but uh, I will, don't worry. I'll make it up to you next time. Uh, and obviously with the last video as well. But thank you so much for joining me today. If you have enjoyed this, and I hope you have, drop a like. That'll be fantastic. The league may not be going as well as it was originally, but we always knew that would be the case. Disappointment against Leicester, but we do get ourselves a draw for the knockouts of the Europa Conference League. And I think we can still go very, very deep. So if you, if you like, enjoy. If you like, enjoy. If you enjoy, like, that'll work too. <laughs> I stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So go follow there too. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.